hobby for me. And uh, yeah, being able to see things that you cannot see with the naked eye. Mike Courtright, an amateur astronomer and NASA ambassador from Rockford, is among the millions of people around the country getting ready to witness the celestial event of the decade. The solar eclipse has just entered the U.S. and Texas and will be vi visible here in Michigan in less than a couple of hours. We do have live coverage of this one-of-a-kind event. News 8's David Horak has more for drivers who may want to pull over to watch the eclipse. Meteorologist Scott Larson is at the Grand Rapids Public Museum, while meteorologist Sarah Flynn is watching this event from Arkansas. But we head to meteorologist Matt Kirkwood right now first. Matt? Yeah, <laughs> just for weeks we've been anticipating this uh, event, and for weeks been within the scope of the forecast models, been able to latch on, all right, it's going to be overcast, partly cloudy, mostly clear. This is really kind of the best case scenario for us, what's happening now. You can kind of see it playing out right now with the visible satellite loop. The clouds that we had last night and very early this morning are well off to the north and east. There's clouds to our west, but look at this. We are enjoying nothing but a bright blue sky out there at the present time. Expanding the view, this is going to be uh, right where totality is for that eclipse. And they're going to deal with a few high-level clouds out there, but essentially uh, that is it. Uh, they'll thicken up a little bit. But for us, this is the scene we get. And here's a live view. This is GVSU campus, Allendale. There's a bit of, breeze, bit of a breeze out there. But that breeze is out of south and west, and that's uh, pushing our feel like temperatures or our temperatures up around 60 already. I think we'll top out right around 70 degrees today. Uh, again, no clouds in this view as we look uh, through the Holland camera. Uh, temperature currently at 63 in Grand Rapids, uh, 65 currently in Kalamazoo. Even along the lake shore, they're enjoying temperatures uh, in the 60s with the wind uh, turning more southwest. I think they're pretty much going to cap those temperatures off where they are right now. Inland areas top out right around. 70 degrees so really an ideal forecast can't really get much better than that here across the Great Lakes and it's great timing I think we'll have a few clouds to contend with uh, for tomorrow as it appears we're looking at looking at uh, temperatures remaining warm today actually this is gonna be the warmest day we've had since mid-March that's the extra bonus as many of us are out enjoying the eclipse we cool things off towards the latter part of the week and that's gonna be accompanied with a lot of rain so enjoy the show today we will do that, Matt. Thank you. Many places across West Michigan are organizing watch parties, and among them is the Grand Rapids Public Museum. That's where we find meteorologist Scott Larson. So, Scott, at what time will the watch party start? Emily and Stu, some beautiful conditions out here. Approaching today, there was a little bit of concern. We had those showers roll across the area last night, but everything is in good shape now. We have clear skies above, as uh, Matt was just telling us. You can see the Grand Rapids Public Museum in the background. A lot of events are planned throughout the day today. Uh, there is going to be live streams from partner locations along the path of totality, so they're going to be showing those in the theater inside. Also at the Roger B. Chaffee uh, Planetarium, they are going to be showing some special shows and doing some astronomy themed uh, events and learning activities as well. Grand Rapids uh, Amateur Astronomical Association is also going to be hosting a public event right here on the Blue Bridge with some solar telescopes. So uh, it'll be kind of a unique opportunity for folks to see a closer view of the eclipse. Again, that's going to be starting right around 2 o'clock this afternoon. Maximum coverage is expected to happen shortly after 3 at 3.11 today. And the event should end entirely right around 4.30 this afternoon. And as Matt was saying, it looks like the weather is going to be cooperating. We have clear skies above, just a little bit breezy, so make sure you keep your hands on those eclipse glasses as you're looking up. You don't want those to blow away as we'll have some gusts near 30 miles per hour leading through this afternoon. But a lot of excitement here at the Grand Rapids Public Museum for this event that organizers have been uh, planning for for quite a while, and we've been in partnership with them along the way. Let's check in with meteorologist Sarah Flynn, and also uh, she's been traveling into Arkansas with Chief Emeritus Bill Steffen, and let's see what uh, things are looking like down there. Sarah? Hey, Scott, you mentioned good weather in West Michigan. Good weather here in Perryville, Arkansas. This small town is about an hour northwest of Little Rock, where we stayed last night. It actually is a gorgeous scenic drive out to this small town with a population of only about 1,400 people. Joining me now, a familiar face, Chief Emeritus Bill Steffen. Bill, the forecast was a tricky one with this. April tends to be a cloudy month for a lot of us. How's it shaping out here today? Well, this is exactly what we thought. Ten days ago, we started talking about the 
fact that we would have these thin cirrus clouds in the sky. By the way, as hot as it is down here, our temperature is up into the low 80s this afternoon. Up where those clouds are, the temperature is so cold that those are made out of ice crystals instead of raindrops. So it's pretty interesting. Uh, these clouds should hold here, but the eclipse should be uh, quite viewable through the, through the uh, high overcast here, and it should be a fantastic afternoon. Hardly any wind here, and for those of us that are used to winter in Michigan, to <laughs> bop down here and find the temperature at 80 degrees, it's it's, warm. it is warm. It is a change of pace for us, for sure. Now, mm -hmm. you travel down here with about 50 people from the Grand Rapids Amateur Astronomical Association. Right. How has it been meeting everyone and traveling this distance? Well, they all like my shirt. You see, this says, I love meteorology and cats. Remember the cats from down in the basement <laughs> when I was doing the weather during the COVID <laughs> outbreak? Um, it's been great with these people. So many of these people are really knowledgeable about the eclipse and so it's been interesting to glean some of the facts here. The next really big eclipse like this in Grand Rapids at 100% isn't until the year 2099. Mm -hmm. I'll be 148 years old. <laughs> we'll see you then. We'll see Bill then, yeah. apparently then, too. And you've seen a lot of uh, total solar eclipses before, mm -hmm. correct? Tell me what to expect here in the next few hours. Okay, I got really excited when I was a kid. We had some pretty good partial eclipses where I grew up in the Chicago area, and I made the cereal boxes every time so I could look at them and uh, learned a lot about them. At the, at the time. And then, of course, in 2017, I went down to Tennessee, where my mother lived. They were in the total eclipse down there at Oak Ridge, Tennessee. And we had everybody out in lawn chairs. We were at the Energy Museum, where they actually had an astronaut that was narrating the eclipse. Mm -hmm. So wasn't that cool? And uh, we, we had a great time there, and it was totally clear down in Tennessee, not even any cirrus clouds, so perfect viewing. Yeah, very cool here. We'll have someone actually narrate what's happening. Mm -hmm. We'll start to see that eclipse take place just after be uh, doing that live stream as well. You'll be able to see a total solar eclipse here and it's looking pretty good for us Fantastic. so far. So we are excited. For now, we are live in Perryville. I'll send it back to you. Okay, sounds good, Sarah. Yeah, the weather is totally cooperating. Yeah, really I is. love it. Back here in Michigan, the eclipse has some worried, including police who believe that those three hours could be dangerous for anybody out on the roads. News aide's David Horak joining us live in studio to explain that further. David? Yeah, well, soon, Emily, it's an interesting coincidence that the eclipse is happening during Distracted Driving Awareness Month, but what is concerning law enforcement and road workers is that they're both encouraging everyone to avoid travel during the height of the eclipse this afternoon if at all possible, but if you have to, Kent County Road Commissioners are urging drivers to not take pictures or wear those eclipse glasses while driving, of course. Keep an extra eye out for pedestrians taking in the eclipse, especially on those secondary roads to, towards more rural areas. But above all, road commissioners and state troopers are urging drivers to not park along the highway or park along the shoulder to look at the eclipse. I don't want anybody backing up traffic, going on the shoulder. If the shoulders are for an emergency purpose only, it is not for uh, motorists to stop and view the eclipse this afternoon. Now, the key drivers, key for drivers from police is to not rely on those automatic headlights. Just turn them on manually because although the tech in our cars and trucks has advanced, they explain that it's best to not take any chances since the partial eclipse will cover about 94% of the sun here. Emily? David, thank you. Storm teammates Blake Harms and Phil Panarski will host a totality watch party on the Wood TV Live Desk today. You can join in at 2.30 at woodtv.com.